Nikki. Welcome back to Ranting with Ricardo. And we're doing another review, recap, my thoughts, my feelings, because it's my channel and I can do what I want on the Love & Hip Hop Fan Bam reunion. And um, for all my socials and all that stuff, that's in the description box below. And I will be adding some links to some uh, petitions and just some information just that I think would be great for y'all to check out. So all that stuff will be in the description box below like real like below like i'll check out the description box i got some good stuff down there anyway um like I always say if you're new to the channel please like comment and subscribe i'm trying to grow this channel if you're not new but you haven't subscribed please do that and you know like and comment and if you've already subscribed you know you can like and comment you can watch this all the way through i need the views okay i'm trying to grow this channel i'm trying to be able to build myself up so i can help somebody else build themselves up okay uh we're gonna get into it so as we get into day three we see trick deep frying some chicken in a hotel room close to like a little bathroom area or sitting area i don't know but i'm like ooh, you could get a deep fry up in there well okay do you boo um we also get bambi uh talking about how it's hard to have a marriage when you have people throwing wrenches in it, mama D, and just everything that's going on, especially when you have a husband that does not want to communicate with you on certain things or does not want to communicate with the other woman that he had a child with because he still feels some type of way because there's a lot of hurt there, but because he's a grown man who likes to act like a child, you can't fix that. Yeah, it's hard out here for a wife, okay? It's hard for her. Um, and Sierra's hosting a spa day for the ladies. Um, we see for the ladies, it's Paris. I don't know why she's on the show, but okay. April, Sierra, Jasmine, Carly, Bambi. We don't see no trick, not trick. We don't see no Trina. We don't see no joy. I don't know if they said they was going to do their own thing by themselves or if they scenes got cut. I don't know. This is not my show. Okay. I don't run pr production. Um, and we also didn't see Erica, but that was more because of Sierra not wanting to cause any tension or having no type of issues between Bambi and Erica. Because even though they talked last week on the show, so like for them, it was yesterday, even though they talked yesterday, they didn't really talk, talk like that. And she didn't want no problems. And we also didn't see Yandy, but Yandy was setting up for her event for the night. <sighs> oh, Chad, it's a lot. Okay, it's a lot for this episode. Mm -hmm. Had me in tears a little bit. We see Jock and Imani, they running up a hill trying to work out. Jock talking about, you know, before COVID, I had the chesticles all up and perky and everything. The arms was looking good. I had like a six pack going on. I was like, I'm inclined to believe you because I don't follow you and I don't care. I don't care. Anyway, he's talking to Imani and we find out that Imani is actually the oldest out of all eight kids so i was like yeah i'm the oldest out of all my mama's kids and my daddy's kids homeboy i know the feeling except your youngest sibling was not born when you were 20 years old it's another story for another time that's probably like a get to know me um we find out that he's the oldest and that one of the main reasons jock brought him on the trip was because homeboy got himself arrested for doing donuts outside of jock's club like don't have anyway they talk and it's just like Imani feel like Jock is hard on him and that he wants Jock wants him to do stuff on Jock's time not his time and that's not what he's trying to work at and Jock explains like when you out here doing dumb stuff that's the time when I see myself in you. Or when you're about to go do something that you know you shouldn't be doing, that's when I see myself in you. So I'm hard on you to keep you from making the same mistakes that I did. And I'm like, <laughs> if that didn't sound like my mama, I don't know what. It's not just like, I've done some dumb things in my life, but mostly like my mom, she always instilled this in my head. I want you to be better than me. So... When I graduated college, my mother, even though it was in quarantine, she was so happy because I graduated, I ain't had no kids, I ain't have no debt, I didn't have anything, and I graduated. Same as like with high school. She's so happy because in her mind, her kids are supposed to be a better representation than she is. 
supposed to do better than what she did and in turn when we have our own children like my youngest sister for my mother is seven so it's gonna be a very long time before she even no long time but like my brother he has two kids and I don't have any children but for us it's like we were supposed to do better than our mother now our children are supposed to do better than us and it's like I understand that like you don't want your kids to make the same mistakes you've made you don't want your kids to do the same things you did because you made those mistakes you did what you did to make a better life for your kids so they wouldn't have to go through the same things that you're going through and it sucks to see them going down that path because as much as you want to snatch them up and tell them this is how it's going to be this what it is you can't because especially when they're older when legally by law by the united states of america they're an adult they can do whatever they want, but you don't want them to f fall prey to the bullshit, okay? So it'd be hard like that, but I think that he understands what her, where his father is coming from, and he wants to do better. We also find out that um, Jock's nephew was killed outside of his club on Jock's birthday weekend. So his uh, nephew and his son used to hang out a lot together and... As much as Jock tried to keep them away from the fuckery and bullshit of the outside world, you can't really stop that from happening. And unfortunately, that caused, like, his nephew um, passed away. So he, he just, Jock going through it, he is. He has lost 60, no, not 60. In the past 60 days, he has lost four people. And we find out later in the episode that I think it's like MO3 or Mo is a rapper in Dallas. He was killed in a drive-by on a highway and him and Jock were close. They was like brothers and it's just like, you realize how mundane all this bullshit is. You see how precious life really is because you're only put on this earth for so much time. So when you get here, when you are old enough to do what your purpose is, you better make it happen. Because at any time, at any moment, it's over. And I think that's what, like, this is showing, like, everything going on in the outside world, that's what it's showing people. My purpose on this earth needs to be met before I get up out of here. Because I only have a short amount of time here. I don't know how much time i have so i'm gonna say it's short but i need to do what i need to do i need to help the people i need to help before this life is over and a lot of people we just been losing a lot of people so jock is going through it they also talk about um the fact that amani is a little flirty flirty with carly 26 year old daughter not to mention that because i don't think she wants you young man you 18 going on i uh, know you 19 going on 20 i think she don't want you young man she want old man she said she like older men last episode and jock was like you got protection he was like yeah i got three boxes okay and i was like first of all that's not gonna happen but i'm proud of you because you know most people don't believe in protection and they just believe in the pull out method and most of them people got a whole bunch of kids at a young age. That's not cute. It's not. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we get to the spa day. Or, like, going to the spa day. And, you know, the girls are just talking. And Sierra's like, oh, she's so proud of Bambi. And Carly said the same thing. She's proud of Bambi. And she was like, since Bambi's become a mother, you can see, like, she's grown some patience. And she's become a more patient person. And Sierra feels like Bambi is has helped her become a better stepmother because she sees her with Imani and how she loves on her and how she just a lot of stuff that is like happens that because they're friends they see but we don't see because we don't know them people like that. And Bambi, you know, she appreciates that and she it feels great for her it feels great to be appreciated because she's not getting that at home right now and she also says that her and scrappy's biggest issue is they don't communicate i was like i can see because he be acting like a little ass kid most of the time especially because he lets all of the hurt into his life and he don't want to talk to nobody he build it all up and push it all down and then I've never seen that man explode, explode for real. So he just don't deal with it at all. 
that's bad for your health, sir. I'm gonna need you to go to the doctors and get like check that out. That's bad for your health. Um, uh, we see Yandy and she's talking about how she's setting up for her Black Lives Matter event and how she's bringing Tamika Mallory and my son Lennon, and they're going to talk and they are going to try to help the people. And we appreciate that because we saw a lot of Yandy on the front lines out there protesting and doing what she could do and using her voice and using her platform to make sure people know Black Lives Matter and we're not going to stop until y'all realize that and y'all accept that because they do. And I'm going to just say this now, all lives can't matter until Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Okay, got my notes. One of these days I'm gonna get better with these notes. Um, we see Carly again. This is spa day. We see Sierra and Carly talking, and they talk about how their relationship has like it's healing. They've put all the bullshit and the fuckery aside, and they're cool now. And that gets April to thinking about her and how her thinking about her and how her and Paris's situation is so stupid. It was nobody cares because you sat up there and and said that you and little teeny tiny. Fizzle Pop Lenny was not messing around and y'all was not in a relationship, but you were. So you lied and they called you out on it and she called you a hoe-ass bitch. And I'm not going to call you no hoe-ass bitch. I just feel like you shouldn't have lied about something that was clearly facts and not fictional. Mm -hmm. Like, it was all over the social medias and the blogs and all that stuff. So, that show fault. Not ours. We don't care. Um, We see Jasmine and she feels like her and Carly's relationship is not the greatest and it kind of hurts her that Carly has better relationships with her friends than she does with her and she feels like she was never a priority for Carly and we Jasmine and Carly talk later on because we have a little scene I'm gonna just tell you now uh them grown-ass men talking about Jasmine even though she's 26 and she's not that much younger than a few of y'all it's creepy it is I don't care it's creepy Anyway, we see Jasmine and Carly talking and Jasmine just says, you know, you weren't around a lot and I didn't feel like a priority and I want you to stop like being so hard on me. And Carly explains that she sacrificed a lot and she had to work hard to make sure that her daughter never wanted anything from anybody but her mother and she never wanted for anything in life. And here's the thing. Because I get that. Like, I'm not a mother, but I get that stem coming from a child whose mother worked hard and who was, you know, with her grandmother and with her aunt's small circle, like, with those, like, four women, but with them because her mother was working hard. Because let me explain something to you. While it's great that we never wanted anything for, like, money or the material things, like, we never wanted for that, it is, like, a part of us that we wanted our mothers around all the time for us and because you weren't there that's just like a piece of us that it's just like our it grow like that's never gonna grow it's never gonna get back and like you being so hard on her it's just like why are you hard on me which causes a lot of like issue and conflict and friction between mother and daughter it was like my, like I mentioned before, my mother always said, be better than what I was. And, like, growing up, she was hard on me, like, really hard on me. But, as I became, like, a teen, my mother wasn't as hard on me. Because I was not out here doing the same things that my peers were doing. So, she wasn't as hard as she could have been. But it sucks, it's just, like while you got her the material things and x y and z and she never wanted for that she wanted your attention she wanted you to be around she wanted to feel like she was a priority and because she's now a grown woman it don't really help that you really trying to be hard on her and she's a grown woman like she's not she's your kid but she's not a kid so that's gonna be a lot of like Go to therapy. I can't, like, y'all just go to therapy. That's about it. And, you know, they talk it out and they hug it out or whatever. She's not a, Jasmine's not a very, like, affectionate person. And it's like, I'm not either. I don't like being touched. Like, don't hug me. Don't touch on me. Don't do nothing without my permission. Nothing happened to me. It's just like, I don't like being touched. 
Um, Jock, what is this? Oh, Jock don't, yeah, the guys, they sit by the pool and they get some food, get some pizza, get some wings, everything. Jock don't eat pork, he don't eat beef, but he say bacon does make his nipples hard. I said I didn't need to know that. Um, Mendeecees talks about, like, getting out of jail, how he was stuck in the past. Like, when he went in, or, like, before he went into jail, Yandy was Susie homemaker at home on the show doing some business but she was at home taking care of the family taking care of him being a superwoman okay and him getting out of jail he was like she's now a businesswoman barbie so she can no longer play she's a homemaker making meals taking care of everybody now you got to be grown man now you got to be superman and do some shit for yourself and he says that's what caused a sh like issues between them two because he's used to yandy in the past he's used to yandy four years ago and he needs to really get in tune and get to know yandy right now grown-ass woman yandy Yandy that's out here fighting for people's rights yandy's who is out here working and creating all these businesses you got to get to know that yandy ray j talk about how prinky be sunning him like she really be sunning him he talk about how she told him to go to his room. Oh, my God. She really be out here signing this man. She called him a bitch. I think she called him a hoe, she, he said. He said he. she told him, go to your room. I said, wow. But my thing is, did you go to your room? When she told you to go to your room, did you go to your room? She really be out here signing you, bro. And he's like, he knows that she loves him but his whole thing is do you like me that's the whole thing you can love somebody but you cannot like them and i have some family members that i love them i just don't like them that's the thing and i like i like to keep myself away from them because it's like if i don't like you i don't like you i could love you or i could have love for you if i just don't like you i don't like you i'm sorry but she really be out his son in that room and that is so sad so sad so sad we gonna pray for them Anyway, uh, baby feel like she take it for granted because they be in the house. She doing, she trying to be superwoman and she just don't get the praise and her appreciation that she thinks she should get from her husband. And that makes her feel some type of way. Scott feel like they fine. And I'm like, okay, that's not what your wife said, but I'm going to leave that alone. Hell, that's not even what Mama D said. So obviously y'all got some issues. Um... He also don't feel like he should have to talk to Erica. And Bambi feels like she tries a lot with um him and just the fact that Imani is getting older. So she tries because it makes her feel some type of way that Imani has to grow up to see her mother and father not talking. And you want, especially like girls, like as they get older, you want them to see everyone having a healthy relationship with men and women let me tell you something scrap because i told you this last week i need you to hear me i need you to receive this message your daughter while she's getting older while she's 16 she will be 18 in two more years you think that oh 18 years that's fine i did my due, dil due diligence i don't have to do anything else yes you do because like i said last week you not talking to her mother is going to put issues on her that's going to make her have to choose in the future who's going to be able to do, come to this event who's going to be able to do this this and this you are causing issues for your daughter at some point you got to be a grown man and put the big boy draws on and go talk to that lady i get it it's a lot of hurt there it's a lot of pain but y'all got to talk because you don't want your child to feel like well if I do this, then I can't invite my mama. Or if I do this, I can't invite my daddy because they two grown-ass people who can't be in a room together. No, you don't want to put that type of issues on your child. I don't care if she's 16, about to be 18 in two years. Talk to that lady. Because I guarantee if you don't, y'all going to have issues in the future and going to be wondering, how'd y'all get here because you wouldn't talk to nobody? Anyways, um, Joy and Trig, you know, they have a little back and forth, and it was like, we could been trying to get a divorce, okay? I don't know why the feet's dragging. We've been trying to get up out of this thing. Paris and April's beef is stupid. We don't care. 
we don't. We really don't. Um, like I mentioned, Jock finds out that his uh friend, who's like a brother, he passes away, and you know, just talking about how y'all be in this life, y'all really be in the y'all know the life and y'all be praising this life and then y'all get these blessings to get up out of this life and y'all just be still in there and you've seen how many people we have lost because y'all still want to be in this life no when you get them blessings to get up out of that life you take them blessings you get yourself up out of there you help your people and then you go back to your neighborhood not the hood neighborhood you go back there and you try to build that neighborhood up. You try to help those people there so they don't have to go through the same things you went through. And they don't have to look for any and every opportunity to get the hell up out of here. And don't have to face the things that you have. I feel like when I leave my community as I get older and I have my five-year plan, when I leave my community, I'm leaving something there that's going to help the community. Because that community helped raise me. That community helped me. So why wouldn't I want to help them? Why wouldn't I want to help the people that are there to make sure they never have to struggle like I've struggled? Why wouldn't I give opportunities to the people that are there so they can take them and they can show people that there is more to life than this life. There is more to life than struggling. Y'all got to stop praising the life and i'm gonna tell y'all that now because y'all praising the life is gonna have a whole bunch of people in a bunch of fuckery and bullshit um trick speaks about him being a father his kids ain't never gonna be in the bullshit okay he will go down swinging and fighting kicking and biting before he lets his any of his kids fall victim to the bullshit that's up in this world today and i'm telling you now y'all gotta stop praising the life um, you know, Jock tells Amani about his friend and Amani was like, he appreciates being to see, being able to see another, you know, another side of his father, like really seeing his emotions and seeing who he is as a man. And, you know, Jock tells Amani, you gotta make a promise to me that any good opportunity you get in life, you take. And that's the whole thing, like any good opportunity, I'm talking to the people now, any good opportunity y'all get in life, y'all take it and y'all get out of any bad situation or any, it can't even be a bad situation. You take those good opportunities and you do something for yourself. You make life better for yourself and eventually you give back to help make life better for somebody else. Ciao. Um, we see Tamika Mallory and uh, my son Lennon, they are talking at the Black Lives Matter event. And I say, Ray J, the only one that's wearing a mask. Y'all gonna, I hope all of y'all got tested for COVID. But Tamika speaks on about how in the past, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he didn't have the resources we have. So calling and talking to people was, uh, you gotta wait for that. But now we have the technology, we have the resources, we have the platforms, we have the voices, but we are so scared to use them. And that just can't be it no more. Like you have the resources, you have the platform, you have the voice, you use it so you can make this world better. You cannot, okay, I'm gonna tell y'all now, you, there's a few things in life you cannot fight. Aging, no matter how many times these hoes try. Progression, no matter how many times these hoes be trying. And death, cause you know, I don't know if how many of y'all be trying to fight that. Well, we all be trying to fight that cause we wanna have a little more time on this earth but you can't fight those things and right now we're in the age of progression and you cannot fight that so using our voices using our resources using whatever we have to help the cause to make this world better not for us because maybe it's not going to be better for us but for our children and our children's children and those who come after us we have to make the world better for them because right now it's a bunch of bullshit going on, and I don't like it. It's not cute. I'm sick of every time I turn on my TV, there is another black person or another person of color dying at the hands of police or opportunities being missed or just different things happening. And we're just supposed to be okay with it? No. No, no, no. No more. 
I say no more. Um, and that was just about it with this episode. It made me tear up, and but most of what made me tear up will probably be in a get to know me type situation. But that's been it for the fan bam reunion recap review. My thoughts, my feelings, because this is my channel, I can do what I want. And if you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you didn't like the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Hello, I'm here. I'm giving y'all content. What more do you want from me? Anyway, I'll see y'all later. Bye.